Hello, I'm Grant from Maker's Vlog and today I'm going to show you how to put on an SMA mail adapter or connector, which is one of these. Specifically, it's a uh, right angle one. Um, I prefer these just um, because I find them easier to solder and I'll show you why in a second. Now, the reason I'm doing this, as some of you may know, I'm making a jamming device, a drone gun as it were, or at least attempting to. And the, uh, the connector that came with this was a SMA Strictly speaking, it was an SMA meal, but it was the Chinese variant and it doesn't have the pin in it. It was weird. I was going to just get an adapter for this and um, uh, use that, but I thought, you know what, I need SMA meal adapters anyway, um, or sorry, plugs. So I just ordered them and cut that one off. I'm just going to fit that. So let's get into it. Okay, so this is the plug that I cut off. As you can see, it has the uh, the little screwy spinny bit but on the inside there is no pin whereas on this one there is and that's the difference basically you get a lot of these on chinese uh bot radio equipment they usually come with these uh, the bofang radios are a uh, a common uh offender of that so the reason that i like these ones is because they have a little um, gap in the back and I don't know how well you can see that but there's a little groove in there and that's what the center of the coax little pin in there that's what it, it sits on and it's very easy to get the soldering iron in there soldered on and then the braid just uh, fits along this this outside bit here so quite easy to put on I think and all you do to begin with is you sort of give a rough measurement just put the coax up against it like so and I know that from here I just need the coax so all done and focused is used a pair of pliers or snips you can use a knife as well um, just to cut everything back here apart from the uh, the coax and if we do a bit of a uh, test fit, you can see possibly that it's just about touching the center pin. Now that's not great uh, because um, it actually needs to go a bit further in for the coax to touch this. But it's always easier to um, remove material than it is to add it on, so I'm not too fussed with that. The um, reason I didn't record me hacking away at that is because uh, it's really hard to record that and do it. And as you can see, I don't have a whole lot of cable here to work with, so I didn't really want to get it wrong. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut back the uh, outer material of the coax, the outer insulator, um, just so that the braid is, uh, is then loose. And that then will fit over this copper bit here and that's it and like that you've got some braid and a bit of um copper coax well center conductor now point to note with these uh, these connectors they come with a few bits they come with these these are the plugs to plug that hole whenever you're finished with it and the crimps this is the uh this is the cylinder that you put down over this and whenever you have this connected up, it uh, it crimps down over this connector, and that then keeps everything in place, as well as the uh, the solder that you put into into there. There is also these little dots, but you only really need them if this is going to be an outdoor setting and potentially subject to weather, and just makes this um, a bit more sealed. You don't need it if you're going to be indoor use. I don't need it, and I find them really fiddly. So I'm just going to be putting it in with these parts here. So a key thing to note is always remember to put this on your cable before you put on your, your connector because I've done that before and it's not fun. Like so. And for me, I'm also going to be putting some heat shrink on this. So a bit of heat shrink. And uh, just do a test fit to make sure that it fits over the little crimp. 
and I'll put that on first. And there we go. Focus. Now, let's do a bit of a test fit. I think this center conductor is going to be a bit too long. But let's see. Yep, just a bit. So I'm just going to take a whisker off the end of it. Oh, let's see. Get a good view of that. The braid on this cable isn't fantastic, but um, you might be able to see in there that the uh, the copper center conductor is sitting in there. So if I shuffle this over here, can then hold everything in place. And then I need to get the uh, soldering iron in there to uh, put a blob of solder in, but actually, hold on. Sorry, no, scratch that. I'm going to take another wee bit on there because what you really want to be careful of is the center conductor touching this side. If it's touching the edges, then it's going to short out um, between the two. So you really want to make sure that it's only touching that center pin. And I'm not convinced that it's completely there. So just shave a bit of that off. There we go. That's a bit more like it. Happy with that. Now, what you can do is crimp this now and then do the soldering, or you can solder it and then crimp it. It's six and two threes really, it's just personal preference. Um, I am probably going to crimp this first, just so that everything stays in place, and then uh, get the soldering iron in there. Now it's going to be really awkward to film, but if you don't have a crimper like this, you can just use um, a, a pair of uh, pliers and just, just crush it down. Uh, let me see if this films alright. Apologies for the awkward angle, I don't really have a good setup right at this moment in time. And just uh, cross that down a bit. Doesn't need to do much, just a, just enough to uh, crush the wires into place. Cool. Now let's uh, let's see if we can film a bit of solder going in there. So you'll want uh, quite a fine tip on this to be able to get it in there. Okay, and there we go. You can see that the uh, got the little core soldered in there and that's us that's it pretty much connected ready to go so what we need to do now is uh, put the little cap on there which is just these things here and good practice is to use a multimeter to just confirm that none of these are shorted against each other. Um, now I've already checked this and it's all tickety-boo, so happy days. Um, the, the reason I didn't video that is just because it's, I, I'm really zoomed in here and trying to get the multimeter and show that in was just a pain in the ass. But uh, try not to drop the cap. Okay, and the last thing we need to do is uh, the heat sink. Or, sorry, heat shrink. Now, you don't uh, you don't necessarily need this, but uh, I think it just makes it look a bit neater. Now, for the heat shrink, you can either use a uh, lighter, if you have one. Or, in my case, I'm just using the uh, little gas hot air gun. And just apply a bit of heat.
And that's it. You've now got a uh, SMA meal connector attached. And that can go on to, well, in my case, I'm going to be attaching it to this little module. Uh, this is a Wi-Fi module. You might have seen this in a earlier video. And it can now screw on there quite happily. Okay, so that's it. That's how you uh, you attach an SMA connector. Now, the, this is obviously the right angle ones, the uh, non-right angle ones. They work the same way, sort of putting on like an SO239 uh, or, or similar connector. So a bit different, but I, I really like these right angle ones just because you can actually get in there to solder them in some way, shape or form. So that's it for this one. Um, if you've seen my earlier videos, you'll know that this is going to be going on to a, a jamming device. Now, I have everything I need to build it um, to actually make the, the jamming gun. However, I don't have the SDR, the software defined radio that's capable of seeing the frequency ranges. So I can't test it. That's, that's the big issue. Um, I can build it fine, I can't test it. And I don't really want to make the video without being able to show it working and, and to show the, what it looks like. Um, so again, the actual build video, this probably won't be until after Christmas. Um, but yeah, that's it. And uh, yeah, hopefully see you later.